Chapter 11 Kalin groaned as he awakened on the altar floor. He stared at the veiny cracks on the chapel ceiling for a while and regained his senses. Those little cracks were something he would have noticed and fixed if he ever entered the chapel like a normal groundskeeper. It was nice of Father Wallace not to push him too hard. Father Wallace. Wait. It all came back to him. Kalin sat up, winced and clutched his head. It looked like late afternoon outside. He then saw the girl's dried blood on the floor. He staggered to his feet and again groaned. His head throbbed with every step. His ribs ached with each breath. He stumbled to the double doors with a growing sense of panic. Kalin sprinted out of the chapel but abruptly stopped. There was a trail of blood leading into the open wild. He began following it, but instead resumed his sprint back to the heart of town for help. Kalin bolted into the sheriff's office and rushed Deputy Bob and Deputy Mike, who were at their desks frantically shouting into their phones. Help! Kalin pleaded. He glimpsed the gory investigation photos of dead Sheriff Dollins, Father Wallace and Dr. Schmidt. They had been torn apart. Kaylin screamed. No! Thought I told you to stay put, Kaylin! Deputy Bob barked and resumed raging into his phone. I don't care about storms and rough seas. I don't have a couple of days. I need state troopers. I need search and rescue. I need bear hunters. And I need them now! Deputy Mike was screaming into his phone, too. I don't give a fuck. We got rabid grizzlies out here or some shit killing people. We got three dead, including our sheriff and a missing girl. Deputy B -B Bob, Kaylin gasped. Hold on, both yelled. It wasn't bears, Kaylin finally got out. It was three m -m men. They did it. I saw them trying to kill the g girl, too. What? They both said. They attacked me too. Slow down. What men? Deputy Bob demanded. I, I, I don't know. We got to stop them before they kill her. Kaylin, tell me exactly what happened. There's n no time. I think I know which way they went. Let's go. Hold on. It's just me and Mike here. No one's going anywhere till we figure out what the hell's going on. Kaylin screamed and paced around. Still not thinking straight. Kaylin, you're in shock. Sit the fuck down and breathe, Deputy Mike said. Kaylin instead stormed out the door. Hey, the town's on lockdown! Both yelled but had no choice except to return to their emergency phone calls. Kaylin stormed into Dad's house and paced around, biting his nails. There wasn't much left to bite. He'd been a nail biter his whole life so he nibbled on his fingertips and tried not to lose it completely. The walls boasted photos of Stephen and Kaylin's father-son adventures. Rock climbing, fishing, backpacking, horseback riding, hunting, sailing and mountaineering. Kaylin looked strangely awkward and terrified in each, because he usually was. Nature was not his natural habitat. He didn't really belong anywhere to think of it. He hated those photos. He never really knew who he feared more, nature or his father. They were one and the same. Kalin found himself somberly staring at the old photo of Dad, atop K2, with a big smile on his frost-nipped face. That was a few years before Kalin was born. Who was that man? A stranger? A psycho? A badass with nothing to prove and nothing to lose? All Dad ever wanted was for him to be a man too, that much Kaylin knew. Maybe it was time to start. Kaylin stormed into Dad's supply room. He grabbed a rifle and a backpack with two ice axes affixed to it. He tossed into it ammo, survival gear, ropes, climbing and mountaineering gear. He then threw on his mountaineering garb, boots and headlamp. He rushed the open wild like a wayward pasture animal. 
It awaited eagerly past the old chapel at town's edge. He lugged along clumsily, with the rifle in his hands and the gear on his back. It was only the first leg of his naive plight, and he was already tiring. Reality set in harder and faster with every step that took him further from town. The trees eventually engulfed him. The old chapel was no longer visible behind him. Would Dad approve? Or was Kaylin in so far over his head that even Dad would tell him to stand down? The girl's sparse blood trail begged him to press on. He stumbled along, winded and sweaty. The terrain gradually steepened and roughened. He tripped, fell and set off the rifle. Its recoil kicked him in the chest like an angry mule. He writhed in pain as his ears rung. Kaylin eventually sat up and stared at the stars in the early dusk sky. Was he out of his mind? He couldn't do this. Even if he found the girl, the three psychos would kill him. They had knives, guns, swords, rifles, and who knows what else. Nothing wrong with letting Deputy Bob and Deputy Mike do their jobs and handle it when they got around to it. All Kaylin could do was hope it all turned out okay.